Okay, so I was up late and I heard the most disturbing YouTube video by a black male bashing the LGBTQ community. And his videos were directed towards lesbians that are black in particular. He wasn't really so much primarily focused on other lesbians of that aren't black. It was mainly black lesbians. And it was really sad because it was so bashing because we already have videos on YouTube that bash black women, females that are not, you know, LGBTQ, but we have like a whole host of videos just bashing lesbian females that are of color. So I feel a lot of it is insecurity because things are different now because of the inclusion and the gay marriage and some of the things that are some of the the laws and some of the things that are more inclusive of LGBTQ people and a lot of more people who are in the communities are standing up and admitting and being open about their sexuality and being more confident about themselves and it's not like it used to be where people were in the closet and hiding who they really were so this video came up and the article about Candace Wiggins if you're not um, familiar with it I will pull up this is sort of like the aftermath of an article that came out about this young lady who played for the women's basketball team Candace Wiggins she said that she retired from the WNBA two years earlier than planned because the environment was so toxic for a league so inclusive to LGBTQ community, Wiggins said she was treated like an outcast and was played more physically than others simply because she's heterosexual and she's in a lesbian dominated league. So Atara Van Vanderveer said that she doesn't know what happened to the Stanford guard Candace Wiggins that what she went through in the WNBA but the Cardinal women's head coach defended the league from Wiggins sharp criticism Wiggins a four-time All-American for the Cardinal in 2004 to 2008 said in an interview in the San Diego Union Tribune which it chronicled or printed on a Tuesday that she was bullied during her eight-year term in the WNBA of her career because of her heterosexualness. So in other words, this young lady said she was bullied because she's straight and she's not gay. So Wiggins said that the culture of the WNBA is very, very harmful and that she was harassed from time that she had been drafted from by the Minnesota Lynx in 2008. I would say that 98% of the women in the WNBA are gay women, she said. That is not exposing. Common sense will tell you that you can, some people are more flamboyant and others aren't. Some people are more, it's more evident that you can tell that they're gay or they're possibly gay and then others you can't tell at all. Which brings me to this. It goes on to say, she said that other players were jealous of her because of her popularity. So she goes on to say that people were deliberately trying to hurt me all the time. I had never been called the B word so many times in my life than I was in my rookie season. I'd never been thrown to the ground so much. The message was that we want you to know that we don't like you. So Vanderveer said that she loved coaching Candace, Stanford's second all-time leading scorer. I don't know what her experience was in the WNBA, once again, but what I do know about the WNBA under the president, Lisa Borders, the NBA commissioner, Adam Silver, is that an, an, an inclusive, supportive workplace is really high on their agenda. It is unfortunate that someone would feel that way. I just think that they work really hard and have a great environment. Okay, so there's more in the article about all of these um, allegations. 
and there's multiple articles out there about this so I'll leave the title of this article and if you want to pull up her name I'm sure the other articles will come up about her allegations of being bullied so as you see you see her in her jersey and her uniform so I just want to digress here the video that I heard was very hateful it was very mean it was very spiteful there's this wall of homophobia in the black community with certain individuals so a lot of times they'll use religion as a weapon against these people that are in the community and it's just really ignorant a lot of it is not having enough education about LGBTQ people of color and a lot of times people have to hide and com they don't want to reveal who they are because of the hatred that they go through in the bashing and from the the videos that I had witnessed and that I heard last night it was so sad it was so scary a lot of them were very violent they were you know even just with regular women that let's say they're not lesbian I'd be scared you know these individuals that posted these videos they sounded like even if you weren't in the LGBTQ community that they were very violent towards women just in general that they had violent spirits so this guy his name is Cordell Stewart and he's a football player and he's married to um, an a woman who was formerly on Atlanta Housewife her name is Portia and she is the host of Dish Nation you'll see a clip of her but there was a scandal that recently came out about this man and there was this gay guy who said that he had intercourse or he had sex oral sex with with Cordell Stewart and the guy who had claimed that he did this his name is Andrew Caldwell so he now is saying that he was once gay but he's no longer gay that he went to church and he saved and sanctified and all this kind of stuff but if you see the videos he's got all kinds of controversy and all kinds of videos of him on facebook him talking he's still gay i'll just say that i don't know these individuals i'll say this they hurt the lgbtq black community because I don't know if these are just like internet hustlers or they're like what you call fly-by-night opportunist where they're just trying to jump on the bandwagon they're just trying to figure out how to get money out of individuals so that they can become popular and he has blown up even in the controversy of it all so he's very outspoken very flamboyant and if you go and pull up Andrew Caldwell you'll see like videos and you'll see commentary of him him talking about his hotel who he hangs out with what has happened just look at him he's claiming that he's no longer gay which I don't buy it and he's not the only one there's been some other people who are in the african-american community who are lgbt you clearly know it is evident that they are gay lesbian bisexual transgender uh queer so these people are claiming they're no longer gay but you know yes they are I don't know if they're jumping on a bandwagon because it's just equal opportunity to jump on the bandwagon to become an overnight celebrity, internet, uh, internet celebrity, but I feel like that's where a lot of this is coming from. This hurts the, the people who are not about drama in the LGBTQ community. It hurts them a lot greatly. So this is a clip of Portia. So I'm sure she's like, you always see her on Dish Nation and she's with a cast on Dish Nation she seems like she's a very energetic upbeat young lady and I know she just feels you know really embarrassed behind all of this craziness it's like she's sort of caught in the middle and her name has come up in some of the drama so the next clip is Michael Sam he's an NFL star Missouri senior defensive lineman Michael Sam now he has come out as is a gay man african-american and he has been upfront and honest from the get-go he's not closeted he doesn't hide who he is he's secure in his own skin and that's the problem i feel that a lot 
of especially males who are black because of the culture that there's a lot of them who are not bold enough to just come out and say I'm a gay black man some can't hide it while like this guy he could have Sam Michael Sam he could have hid it he could have lied he could have not said anything and you wouldn't have known really because he doesn't really uh, he doesn't he's not like flamboyant like Antoine Dodson hide the kids hide the wife which he's claiming he's for conversion therapy him and Mike Pence probably been talking recently I don't know but anyway it says I'm not gay but a $20 bill is a $20 bill right if it quacks quacks like a duck walks like a duck talks like a duck guess what it is a duck so I'll just be honest with you there are a lot of gay bashers there's a lot of homophobia in the black community a lot of hatred and there's hatred women haters also there's a lot of young men who they just hate it they hate just a lot of hatred that they're harboring and a lot of those men have gotten a lot of that because they can no longer control women because this we're coming into a different time now where there's a lot of independence where it's the family structure of the black community is a lot different than what it used to be um, you do still have hetero couples but now you have a lot of women who even if they're not you know LGBTQ they're more independent they're working they're getting educated they're going out there's you know they're able to take care of their own bills they're able to kind of take care of their own children so if you come into relationship with women of color it has to be for it has to be for uh love or uh it has to be for the relationship of it all it's not a thing anymore about oh the security uh financial security and what have you if it's there it's there if it's not she you've got a lot of women now that are able to handle their own so I just feel that there's a lot of uneducated people out there and people need to change their thinking.